and welcome back. In this video I'll be showing you a very simple vehicle computer backup power supply that I made a while back and you can also make at a very reasonable cost. This device is a must-have for all newer vehicles especially those made in the past 10 years that need to have their battery replaced. Older vehicles such as mine shown in many of my videos have less sophisticated computers so I can disconnect my battery, install a new battery, then start up the vehicle with all the accessories turned off and allow the vehicle to idle for 10 minutes before driving it. During that time the computer will relearn certain settings and when you drive the vehicle's computer will relearn and adjust even more settings. Newer vehicles with highly sophisticated control systems as well as sound systems that require codes to be re-entered if power has been removed from the sound system could also experience a lot of issues which can result in you going back to the dealership to have certain things reprogrammed and we all know how expensive that can be. If you use this right here then all that trouble can easily be avoided. Now let's take a closer look at this and I'll explain exactly how it's made. If you've been a long time follower of my channel you would know that I have many videos on how to repair GY6 scooters. In the past I owned a GY6 150cc scooter and on that scooter I installed an accessory socket that had a circuit breaker attached to it. So what I did is I kept this battery under the seat with this attachment right here to plug into the accessory socket and there's a 5 amp fuse in here and in the event that my battery went dead and I had a lot of trouble kick starting the scooter I could plug this into the accessory socket to give my other battery a boost. Now there's actually three reasons why I decided to use this 12 volt 5 amp sealed lead acid battery. Number one, it was all I can get my hands on when I was living in the Bahamas for my scooter. Number two, it does have a good current capacity. So while this is plugged into your vehicle, if you happen to open up a car door or if the hood is open with the lights on, this battery can easily supply enough current to maintain the lights as well as the computer. And the best part of all, because it's a sealed lead acid battery, you can leave this connected once the new battery is installed, turn on the vehicle, let it idle for 5 or 10 minutes to top off the charge on this battery. Now I paid $15 for this battery shipped. This connector over here with about 2 feet of wire cost me $7 shipped. And this over here I had laying around. You could pick these up at a ReStore or a Goodwill store for maybe 2 bucks. So everything here cost me under $25. You're also going to need a couple of female blade connectors. In this case it's going to be blue, some heat shrink tubing, some electrical tape, and a couple of nylon ties. Now the plug you see right here is connected in parallel with the OBD port over here. So when you get this cable you want to identify which is positive, which is negative. The best way to do that is using a continuity tester. I show this one on my channel, it's pretty compact. It's excellent, has multiple features. And what you could do is just go to the tip and you're going to probe the end of the wire to identify which one is the positive. Once you know which one's positive, you're going to strip the wire back about that far, maybe two and a half inches. Then you're going to strip the ends of this wire about a half of an inch to expose the copper. Now the pins that are important on this connector here, if you take a closer look, over here it's pin one, two, three, there's pin four, sticking out a little further than these, and pin five. These two pins here, one is a chassis ground and the other is a signal ground. You're going to take your continuity meter, you're going to strip the end of this cable, like I said, go about two inches, separate all the wires, strip the ends, exposing the copper, and you're going to use the continuity tester to identify which one of those 16 wires is connected to pin four, and pin 5. Once you identify pin 4 and 5, you're going to take the two wires, twist them together, and it's going to be connected to battery negative, along with the negative from this jack right here, or plug. If you take a look at this plug once again, it goes 1 through 8, then we have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, pin 16 is right over here, that's going to be connected to the positive, so you're going to identify which one that is. You're going to connect that to this tip here, if you even choose to have this as well. And then it's going to be connected to battery positive. 
Over here, you can see there's yellow and orange. That was pin 4 and pin 5. Those are soldered together and goes to the battery negative along with the negative from the side of this plug. It's extremely important that you make sure you use the exact pins I'm showing here. Do not use the wrong ones, otherwise you can damage your vehicle's computer system. When this is all connected, what you want to do, you want to make sure that it's connected properly. So you're going to take the digital multimeter, we'll put this over here on pin 4, and I'm going to touch this, hopefully you can see it, right here, pin 16. And you can see 1289. And then we can bring this over to pin 5 and do the same thing. 1290, 1289. And that makes sure that it's working properly. Now I want to show you one other thing that's very important. Let me turn this around. I just secured the cable like this so it doesn't pull. I glued this little plate on, put this tie down, and it keeps everything nice from moving around. There's heat shrink. When you strip this cable, you're going to have 16 wires. And you're only going to be using three of them. So what you want to do is use the three that you're going to use. And you want to cut the wires that are remaining. Just leave two on the inside that are sticking out. Cut one short, one maybe a little bit longer. Make sure they're far apart. The last thing you want to do is have two wires that have been cut next to each other, allowing them to short out because keep in mind all the pins are still inside this connector. All the remaining wires, you're going to take them, cut them to different lengths, do not strip them. You're going to fold them back over the wire here. You can see there's one there, there's one there. All different lengths so none of them can touch. Wrap it once with electric tape and then slide the heat shrink over and apply the heat. By doing that, there's no chance at all that any of those remaining wires can be shorted out in this connector. And it's as simple as that. So what you would do, take this right over here, either one, plug this into your vehicle's port. I put my ignition switch to the accessory on position, and then I go underneath the hood, disconnect the battery cables. Very important, when you disconnect the battery cables, make sure they do not short out against each other. Make sure those cables also do not touch chassis ground. Install the new battery, tighten everything down securely, start up the vehicle, let it idle for about 5-10 minutes, and then you could unplug this. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.